So I'm in the bathroom and I'm just holding it in. And I remember having this feeling of like, what are you going to do about it, Heather? You're Mm -hmm. scared. What's the opposite of fear? Love. Love. What's the opposite? Like, what am I? It's like, okay, if you're afraid to die, then what are you really afraid of? And I'm like, I don't know how to live. Wow. I don't know how to feel alive. Before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to announce that applications are now being accepted for the September Alive Coaching Experience. Head on over to heatherchauvin.com forward slash alive. Heather Chauvin, that's spelled C-H-A-U-V-I-N.com forward slash alive, A-L-I-V-E. This will be your chance to reset how you're managing your emotions and learn how to fully step into the woman you have felt called to become. We focus on work, relationships, managing your time and energy, and emotional freedom. My clients often experience radical shifts in their health, their parenting, their partnerships, bank accounts, and overall satisfaction with life. Alive was designed for you, the podcast listener who has been curious about how to take what I talk about and integrate the work into their everyday lives. There is a massive difference between listening and integrating, which is why I've structured this program to help you get out of your own way, hold you accountable, and challenge you to grow. It's also a great opportunity for those who have wanted to work with me in some capacity, but may have felt overwhelmed or intimidated on where to jump in. I am so confident in the work that I do and the results my clients gain when they're ready for change. Your first step is to apply. I structured it in this way so that you can get your questions answered before committing. There's nothing more annoying than investing in something that isn't a good fit for the support you're seeking. I pride myself on the quality of the community I've created and the value I bring to my clients. If you've been searching and feel called to apply, I encourage you to do so today. It takes five minutes. If you decide to apply and are accepted, I'm even going to gift you $500 off if you register before August 24th. Head on over to Heather Chauvin dot com forward slash alive for all the details. This is your opportunity to reset, realign, and learn how to change the way you live, work, and parent in alignment with how you want to feel. Now let's dive in to today's episode. I don't believe freedom is more time or more money. I believe time and money are tools when used correctly, but true freedom to me is giving myself permission to lean into my desires. Hello, ladies, and I am so excited to share what we are calling the best of summer episodes. And what I decided to do, I want to give you a little background information. What I decided to do was really get clear on how do I want to feel in my life this summer and reflecting on my kids' ages and where I'm at in my business and just the time and the space that I want, that I don't need to ask anyone for their permission. Um, So then I have to take action and I have to communicate my needs. So what we decided to do is create some space for the rest of the summer. And so what you're going to be hearing over the next few weeks is the best of podcasts. So these are some of my hand-picked podcasts, some of the fa- my favorite um, interviews that I've had, and really good conversations. And if you have already listened to these episodes and it's popping back up in your feed and you're listening to this, I highly encourage you to listen again because you just never know uh, what kind of gems you are going to hear. It's like reading a book again and again and again, and getting something different every single time that you're listening. I also wanted to remind you that if you heard about the um, the Energy Finder quiz, go take that. 
and send me a message on Instagram. So I might not be podcasting, but I'm popping in and out of social. So go find me on Instagram at Heather Chauvin, C-H-A-U-V-I-N. Send me a private message um, and let me know what were the results that you got on your Energy Finder quiz. And I hope wherever you are in the world, you are giving yourself permission to create freedom in your life. Time freedom, emotional freedom, going for your dreams, even if it scares the crap out of you. Creating the connections that you want and desire with your family, but also doing the wildly emotionally uncomfortable work to come back to yourself and be present, even when other people don't agree with your actions. You are worthy of feeling good, and you are also worthy of healing the relationships that you desire uh, to create in your life. So... Happy summer and enjoy today's episode. What's up, Phoenixes? And welcome back to the Hungry for Happiness podcast. I have Heather Chauvang on the show today. I am very, very excited to open up this conversation of motherhood, being a mother, whatever kind of mother that is, and just talking about the dynamics of how to truly honor ourselves while we are playing these incredibly important roles in the world. So thank you so much for being here, Heather. I am so excited. I I love, oh, yes, it's going to be a juicy one. It's going to be, I can feel it already. I just told her before I press record, I'm like, I like you already. Let's do this. (laughs) (laughs) I love when I have, like, you and I have never spoken before, we've never met before, but I love when I have that, like, instant, like, I like you before I record a podcast. I'm like, ooh, this is going to be good. (laughs) You can always tell when you're listening to those conversations. You're like, "Mm, but just, Mm. they weren't feeling it. They weren't feeling it. So the first question we ask is, what is the number one thing about life that makes you feel most alive? Mm. So when, I, when you ask me this question, I think about the most terrifying moment in my life when I was actually had to make the decision of whether I was choosing to live or not. Um, and I would say that's when you feel fear. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah. Like so much of my life, I didn't even realize I wasn't living Mm -hmm. until I was paralyzed in fear knowing that I might die. Holy. Yeah. We've never gotten that answer. Fear. You know, when people, when people think of like the sensation of aliveness, we often get like love and connection and that's cool. But like, it's so true. Like fear activates our body in a way that nothing else does. So I'm curious, what was that? What was that experience? So four and a half years ago, I was doing what every good business owner does, <laughs> hashtag hustle. Right, and right. I was busting my booty. My boys, I, they're now 13, eight and five. The youngest was four. Or, gosh, the youngest was a year old, four years ago. Um, so I was breastfeeding, wasn't paying attention to my body, was barely eating, not getting good sleep. Um, and these things are possible when you have a newborn, by the way, maybe not to the quality of, you know, always when they're older. But my point is you don't, it doesn't need to become your norm. And mm. I just, you know, I wore that badge of honor of chronic fatigue and um, numbness Like, Mm -hmm. look at me, look at me. Yeah. I got baby shit in my hair and I haven't taken a shower in a week. Look Mm -hmm. at me guys. Oh, Heather, you are a super mom. Right. My body was just telling me over and over and over again, pay attention to me, pay attention Mm -hmm. to me, pay attention to me. And for the first time in my life, I'm like, what does this mean? Like I've never paid attention to you. I've Mm -hmm. never paid somebody else, something else I need to pay attention to. I'm exhausted. I don't like this. So I went to the hospital after my husband made me go to the hospital and my abdomen was swollen and they did a CT and blood work. And I kid you not, well, on the spot, they told me I had cancer Wow. And, um, I already knew mm. I, I was, con- you know, when you get that gut confirmation. Uh, yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 It's knew. like that dull, like feeling in your body, like, yep, this is it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So from that experience, have you changed the relationship you have to fear? I think so often for those people listening, they have such a dysfunctional relationship with fear and they avoid it at all costs. Have you shifted that relationship with fear? Like what is, how, how does it show up in your life now? Mm, That's such a good question. Okay. So 
fear was this negative association. So I love that book, um, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Oh, so very good. I'm actually looking at that book. As, as you said that, my eyes were of course. at my bookshelf. Of, of course. course. <laughs> of course you are. Um, that's just how the universe works, right? <laughs> so I can't paraphrase that book, but the what I took away from that book is we are going to co-create our life, especially our creative lives. And your life mm-hmm. is this masterpiece. So you are going to conscious, if you choose to consciously create your life the way you want it to, you know, you want to feel good. You want to think outside of the box. You want to go for it in your career. You want to shift your relationships. That's creation. That's creativity. Mm. Fear will always be there. It's, Mm -hmm. you just got to choose like, Hey, you're not in the driver's seat today. Right. So fear was running my life before. I'm afraid that my children are going to be failures. I mean, my son, when he was four years old, didn't know how to, you know, control his anger or anxiety. So I made him meditate. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I made him meditate. And I laugh now because I was like, sit down and meditate when really (laughs) it was me. It was Mm -hmm. me who needed to meditate so that I could see what was going on with him. Right. What right. was he trying to tell me? Because if I have a tool or a strategy for something and I feel in control, hence why my podcast is called Mom is in Control, if mm-hmm. I feel in control of my emotional health or whatever aspect of my life that I'm trying to control in others, mm. then I'll know how to guide them rather than try to manipulate control and be reactive. Mm. So fear was that for me. I didn't know how to control fear. So I would just let it run the show and I would just sleep. That was my drug of choice. Like, Oh, I'm tired. I'm just going to sleep. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I feel you. I feel you. Socially. Oh, we can have naps. It's socially acceptable. Mm. Oh, you're tired. You're tired. Sleep, sleep, sleep. And then I realized that fear was actually stopping me from pushing through to the next level in all aspects of my life, like business, money, health, time, relationships, energy, all of that. Mm. So when your body is saying sleep, but your brain is saying, Oh, I should go even for a walk. No. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I should write that one email, but I don't have any energy. I had to figure out how to hijack this little, you know, life hack, whatever you want to call it. Um, fear and the emotions, the fear, the guilt, the overwhelm and go, "Mm, no, 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 no. I see what you're trying to do here. Mm -hmm. You're trying to keep me safe. Mm -hmm. And that big aha moment for me, I remember one night I was lying on the floor, in the bathroom in fetal position, just woke up. This is when I was going through treatment and, um, I was in kind of recovery state and I'm like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And my children are not going to have a mother. And I couldn't, I wanted to sob like, you know, those gross sobs, like snot coming out of your nose and you're just like, you can't catch your breath. Yeah. But I, I couldn't let it out because I was terrified that if my children heard me or my husband heard me, they're going to think something bad is happening. So I, for whatever reason, I should have just went in the car and screamed bloody murder or something, but I didn't. Mm. So I'm in the bathroom and I'm just holding it in. Mm. And I remember having this feeling of like, what are you going to do about it, Heather? Mm -hmm. You're scared. What's the opposite of fear? Love. Love. What's the opposite? Like, what am I? It's like, okay, if you're afraid to die, then what are you really afraid of? And I'm like, I don't know how to live. Wow. I don't know how to feel alive. Mm. Oh my God. I got full body goosebumps. Yeah. I don't know how to live. Okay. So when you were in the bathroom in fetal position and you had that realization, what was the next perspective that you had? I had to figure it out. I, Mm -hmm. in that moment, I felt like I was backed into a corner and all my survival instincts, it, it wasn't fight or flight. I guess it was, but I had to turn my fight into learning how to live because it was like, Heather, what do you want in your life? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I have the exact same conversations with my clients and they're like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm like, then why are you here? Mm -hmm. Why are we having this conversation? What brought you here? This feeling, this ache, something inside of me that wants more. I'm like, then what is that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then after I was just like, what is it? What is it? What is it? And I would take a pen and a paper and I'd write, I want And I'd write, I don't know, for 20 minutes sometimes. Right. I would say, I want a bath. 
mm, I want to go for a walk. I want a coffee date with this particular friend. Mm. Um, I want my mother to see and accept me for who I am. I want my dad to notice me. I want my, I want to feel really connected to my husband. Like, and some of these were like big things like, okay, I got to heal my childhood wounds now. But then some of them were little things like I want a bath. I want to go for a walk. Um, I want a new t-shirt. I want you know, to get my mustache waxed. Like I want mm-hmm. to get my eyebrows done. I, love it. <laughs> I want little, little things. Mm-hmm. Right. And so it was those little things that I felt I had control over. So what I did was then I started taking the things that I did have control over. So I'm going to have a bath. Then I need to create space for a bath. Mm-hmm. I can go get my eyebrows done. Well, at that point I didn't have any eyebrows. They all fell out, but um, little things I could call this friend and ask for a coffee date, mm. little things that I did have control over. And then I just kept doing that over and over again. What do I want? What do I want? What do mm. I want? And it, it felt like Samantha, it felt like I was lost in the woods mm-hmm. and almost, almost dying. Like they found me and they're like, what are you doing, Heather? Like, I don't think your pulse is barely there. And instead of, cause you can't give me the whole jug of water, I'll choke. Right so right. dehydrated, so like neglected. My soul is literally yeah. ready mm. to leave my body. And I had to fight. I'm like, come back, come back, come back. So yeah. I had to give myself little sips of inspiration and, and slowly get myself back to life. Oh my gosh. That's so beautiful. I love the low hanging fruit that we all have access to that we don't take advantage of because we don't acknowledge it. The, the what do I want conversation is so important for the the health of our soul. Like, what is it that I really want right now? Not what's productive, not what other people want me to do, but what is just going to allow me to be in that state of just desire and expansion? Yeah. It's really interesting because I was just having this conversation. Me and my husband have this conversation a lot. Last year, he quit his nine to five J-O-B and started his own little gig. Mm -hmm. And um, I... I didn't realize how much I needed him Mm. around, meaning like missing that connection piece. I mean, entrepreneurship, working from home when your kids are in school or somewhere else is, is isolating. Um, but watching in the back, you know, we have a pool and we were in the, in the pool and just doing nothing, like just chilling right before Mm -hmm. this conversation. Um, and the kids are just doing nothing. My little one's playing with Legos. My oldest is in the water. And and the other one is just, I don't know, picking flowers or dandelions. And yeah. I'm like, this is it. Mm. And and being there, like content, not going, I need to do this. I need to do that. Guys, hurry up. We got to do this. I got to It was like, I don't care where I am in the world. This is what we are all after, to mm. be here and present and content. Mm. So... So true. Even when I am going through my day and I just take a moment and like literally just like step back and observe my situation and feel deeply into my experience and into my body, it's like it's it's like everything stops. And I'm like, this feeling that I'm intentionally creating right now in this moment is the one that my ego is constantly chasing. But I can choose to experience it and feel it when I decide. It's yeah. So fascinating. Yeah. It's It's very weird. But at the same time, I think because I have this weird, uh, and I say weird, but it's not really that weird, (laughs) abnormal relationship to death. I feel like I was so close to the ledge and then I'm like, okay, I got to turn around. I'm going to try this again. Um, I don't really think, you know, that's a whole nother conversation of was it choice and blah, blah, blah. But um, I know that everything is temporary. Right. And I just, I know that like this Mm -hmm. moment is temporary. Everything Mm -hmm. is temporary. Um, My good mood is temporary right? (laughs) and my health is temporary. Um, And I can, I can choose just like I did back then to, you know, create positive habits every day to generate this energy within my body and within my life and my parenting and relationships and business. Um, or I can choose to just let fear run the show. And it's, mm-hmm. it's a very conscious thing and it's always this slippery slope. And I do understand that once I stop, if I decide, 
okay, I've made enough or I have enough energy. I'm going to stop eating healthy. I'm going to stop working out. I'm going to stop, you know, all the habits that I do. I do understand that this is temporary and it can all come back. Um, but it doesn't need to be come from a place of fear. It's like, oh, look at, look at, look at, and just understand that that's temporary. Mm, Tornado can that. come through. The wind will start. This rain will happen. Mm. And then at the end, the clouds will part. So it's, mm. yeah, it's magic. It is magic. I'm so curious to hear the like grim to get like granular. So if you are noticing you're operating from a space of fear and maybe you have that like overachiever slash perfectionist, like running the show, what is your like process in the moment to shift yourself back into a place of thriving and operating from a place of love? So I internally, I was laughing because I'm like, I work with all of those people and they just hate me. <laughs> Because <laughs> I yeah. remember, I remember when people like be present, focus on your breath. And I'm like, shut up, stop telling me that. <laughs> Think about, okay, perfectionism, type A, ambitious, go, 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 whatever you want to call yourself. Think about how many years it has taken you to condition yeah. yourself to become that person. Totally, totally. And then, and then all of a sudden you're like, this is not working for me. Um, I'm burnt out. I'm miserable. I'm unhealthy. Everything is falling apart around from around me. And I don't understand these people who say life is easy and live in the moment. Mm -hmm. So it depends on where somebody is at. But what I do say to people is you do, I don't even want to go as far as saying you do have a choice. What I want to say is you can stop. So stop what you're doing. I don't care if you have to pull over on the side of the road and safely put your four ways on or something and just stop what you're doing. Think, think about what is going on in your mind. Like, holy crap, there is a tornado going on in there mm -hmm. and breathe mm -hmm. simply inhale, like use these lungs that are inside of your body. Everyone's got them. They're working because you're listening to this yep. and take a deep inhale and a deep exhale. Mm -hmm. And then go, what the heck is happening to me? Mm -hmm. And if you can't organize your thoughts, then get a pen and paper and verbal diarrhea, that crap on that page and see if you can categorize them. But if you do not stop, if you do not think, and if you do not breathe, nobody else is going to do it for you. Mm. I love the point you said that, you know, say someone's 40 years old, they have 40 say 30 years of, of learning to hustle for their worth and be uh, overachieving perfectionist, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, they're, they're, they, yeah, they come to that breaking point. They're like, this is not working. I'm so unhappy. I'm so stressed out. And then they try to, you know, the methods that you talked about and then they're like, oh, this is not working. <laughs> it's like, we need like a perspective shift in that moment to go like, look at how much practice you have mm -hmm. from operating from fear. Like operating from love, although it is our natural state, it's not what we're used to because we've been so conditioned differently. So for those people listening, like be patient, be kind. Like every moment is a new opportunity to choose love. Mm -hmm. And if you can't give it to yourself because that's really uncomfortable at first, give it to as many people as possible. Oh, I love that. I and love that. it could be something, I mean, in motherhood for me, it was, you know, when a child is doing something that traditionally I would yell at, uh, which I have to say, I don't really yell anymore. Um, I would just say, I love you like out loud. <laughs> so now it's funny when my oldest, he's 13, when we argue, um, he will end the conversation with, I love you. That and, is the sweetest thing ever. Yeah. And it's like, we can argue, we can have disagreements, but we still respect each other. And it's like, I love you. I love you. Or he'll, it's almost that thing of like, you're pissing me off. Stop mm -hmm. it. So he'll go, I love you, mom. I love you. Kind of like, okay, stop, 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 stop. So and just giving love to others. I mean, I went to, well, you're Canadian. Do you, you yeah. guys have Tim Hortons in Vancouver? Oh, do we ever? Okay. Oh, Timio, Timio's. It was like okay. my go-to. Yes. I had a cousin that came from California. I'm like, you want to go to Tim's? He's like, who's Tim? <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, for those who don't know, Tim Hortons is a coffee shop, but, um, 
I went through the drive through the other day and I didn't have enough like coins on me. I got like a small black coffee. So I was going to use debit because I'm one of those people. <laughs> and I said, Oh, I only have a dollar. And it was like a dollar 55. And she looked at me like dead straight in the eyes. And she said, have a beautiful day and gave me the coffee. Aww, I and know. I was like, wow, thank you. Mm-hmm. I spent a lot of money here. Thank you for that one free coffee. Wow. That was amazing. That's so but beautiful. I knew, but honestly, I, my heart was full. Mm. And then that just ripples out, right? Like I'm nicer when I'm driving. I'm, I'm actually like holding this cup of, uh, bean juice. I like to call it like this. I'm like, what the heck is this shit? <laughs> I love it. We love it so much. I actually don't drink that much coffee, but that's another conversation. Um, and I'm holding it with love. Mm. I'm, I'm thinking about that woman that gave it to me rather than here. And then she doesn't make eye contact and she's like, okay, move on, like hurry up. Mm. Right. We got to get to the next person. Mm. So it's like, how can we learn to lead our lives from a place of love? And whether that's your parenting, your business, your money, your time, your energy, realizing that we can have fear, we can have guilt, we can have overwhelm and all of those, you know, socially acceptable emotions, but we can also shift it Mm. and say, you know what? I don't agree with you, but that's okay. I still respect you. I still love you. And it does take practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I was having a conversation with my boyfriend a couple weeks ago. And, uh, I just said to him, I'm like, why does there have to be so much like martyrism with motherhood? You Mm -hmm. know, I find that like so many women that I speak to, they don't have anything nice to say about motherhood, you know, like, like maybe after getting through the first 10 layers of them bitching and complaining about how hard it is, then maybe it's like, but it's, it's pretty good. It's like, why does there have to be that? And so I I said to him, I was like, I want to just have, I want a role model. I want to like a mother role model of women who take martyrism out of motherhood and operate from love and do parenting differently. Mm -hmm. And then like, lo and behold, my producer booked you on the show and I like creeped through everything you have ever written, I think. And I was like, okay, this is someone I really want to like model after. Cause I just think like your way of being and just some of the things that you've shared um, are so powerful. And so I would just love to talk about what is the conscious choice that you've made to take martyrism out of motherhood? And is it challenging? Is it difficult? What's your experience been like? Was there a shift? Have you always been this way? I'd love for you just to share from that place. Mm. Okay. First, I want to like huge props for even just bringing up this conversation because it's a hugely taboo subject. Um, I, I, like, I mean, you go to the bookstore and it's like mommy time on a freaking wine glass. Right. Um, right. Or, you know, full of coffee. I run on caffeine and it then, totally, totally and it drives me nuts. Um, and I'm, I'll tell, I'll pull back the curtains a little bit. And this is something I'm going through right now. I feel like a lone wolf. Mm. I feel like I have this secret sauce that, um, somehow clearly, you know, we can talk about the journey. It definitely hasn't been easy, but I I don't get it. I don't understand it. And I never have. Mm. So I became a mother when I was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And so right off the bat, I did not flip. I didn't fit the mold for traditional motherhood. Mm -hmm. So I was already judged and labeled as a, you know, statistic. Um, and my mantra at the time, which I didn't even know what a mantra was back then was I will never become a statistic. Never. Mm -hmm. So I had this internal drive when I looked at my son, I'm like, I need to become the person that I want you to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everyone's like, Heather's not going to get educated. Good. You should probably live in her mother's basement for the rest of her life. Right, <laughs> like this right. is this was like you know the projection of where I was going uh, mm-hmm. before I became a mother, and I was just like, "Screw you, world." That was my motivation. Talk about I was I was driven by anger, which 
clearly after a while I had to get rid of, but it did get me very far. Um, and I, I just did everything in my power and I watched and observed people. So at the time I'm 18 in my, you know, early twenties and I'm watching people who are in their thirties, in their forties, tell me how difficult Mm. parenting is going to be, how difficult life is going to be. Um, and not to say that I didn't suffer and struggle. Um, you know, have my fair share, but I always had this thought that, but you have a choice. Mm -hmm. I remember one of my kids' teachers saying, and of course she's an older woman, so she's so much wiser than me and her sarcasm. And I think it was last year or the year before, um, I went away. I was gone to like a retreat or a conference for a few days. Um, so therefore I wasn't home with my children because my husband had to quote unquote babysit his own children. Um, so last time I seen her, she goes, Oh, you weren't, you weren't in town. I was like, no, I was gone away for whatever. She goes, Oh, must be nice. Must be nice. It was the only vacation I had when my children were younger was when I was in the hospital. Wow. And and I'm thinking you probably fucking put yourself in the hospital (laughs) away from your child. And it's right. Like, to be honest, when I was going through recovery, that was a huge aha moment for me when I was sick and I had to spend a lot of time in the hospital by myself. Mm -hmm. I had this fear that my husband was incapable of Mm -hmm. taking care of his own offspring. Right. And clearly he kept them alive and everything was fine. Um, But I was like, wow, this is like a vacation. I'm like, wow, I need to upgrade my life. If I think getting chemo every day for a week is a freaking vacation, right? this is awful. Um, And then I had to experiment with this process of filling my own cup first and seeing if, you know, the thoughts and the stories that I was telling myself of that I'm a bad mother and I'm a failure and all of these things was kind of true. So I would practice because I, again, was afraid that I was going to die. So I'm like, I got to learn how to live. I got to fill myself up. And Mm -hmm. as I did it, I was like, wow, our life is so much fuller. I'm happier. My kids are happier. Wow. They're independent. Mm -hmm. Wow. I still spend so much time with them, but I don't need to be with them 24 hours a day. And I don't need to be their sole caregiver. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing research on you know, the concept of motherhood and, you know, traditionally it was done in the village exactly, and, now, and community. And now we're so mm. individualized and people won't even, you know, sacrifice. And what I mean, sacrifice, because it does seem like it a little bit of money to invest in a, a babysitter. Nope. Mm. Can't, 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 if they're not my mom or, you know, if they're not family, mm. therefore they can't touch our children or come right. Them. Right. And like, what the heck? We're backing ourselves into a corner and then exhausted, burnt out, slowly dying mm. and expect, and then projecting our anger onto the world and our children saying, look what you did to me. I sacrificed everything for you. And I'm like, oh, I, yes. I do not want my children to remember me that way. I do not want them to be angry and resentful and move halfway around the world just to get away from me because I was so controlling. Oh my God. I love how you're talking about this right now. This is so good. And you're right. This is taboo, isn't it? This is oh, totally God. taboo. We might as well talk about sex and money and masturbation. <laughs> hey, let's go there. We've got all day. Um, this is, you're, you're right. Like when we go, when we, when we look back, children were, they grew up in villages, you know, there was everyone, it was like everyone was contributing to the growth of this child. It was not up to one or two people. And just from a developmental point of view, like be the, it allows a child to be flexible and like no different like character, you know, traits and, and, and things like that. It's, I believe it's in the best interest of a child to be around a lot of people as they're growing up. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, think about, just think about your own mentors in your life. It didn't come from one person, right? So yeah. I think about who shaped me the most. It wasn't just my parents. I mean, they, some of them didn't give me the best qualities, but other, other people, other adults in my life actually helped me to get to where I am today because I spent more time with them mm-hmm. and it's not, it's not good nor bad. It, we need it. Like I can't be everything to my children. I I have strengths mm-hmm. and I have weaknesses and other people have strengths and weaknesses and they're not going to want to learn everything from me. So I don't need to be, you know, 
I don't need to be a musician. I don't need to know how to play music. I don't need to know how to play professional sports. I don't need to know how to draw. I don't need to know all of these things, but I can just be me and say, you know what? I think I really enjoy helping you understand your emotional intelligence and gain independence, but I don't need to be a Pinterest mom and know everything and Mm -hmm. be able to you mm-hmm. know, have matching clothes and all of these ridiculous things. And if that's your thing, then do it, mm-hmm. but just be you, be right. you, the best version of you and stop going, Oh my God, they did this. They went on that summer vacation. Oh, well, I didn't take my kids to Disney. So I'm probably, I'm failing already. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. It's like that whole comparison trap, right? It doesn't, it doesn't end when we have kids. It keeps going. Like it's worse. The, the Pinterest mom. I, I totally, I totally see those matching outfits. I'm like, I will never be that person. <laughs> um, so what do you feel? What have your, what have your kids taught you? What's like the best lessons. I, I, I like, I'm around my, my partner's child a lot and I'm like, God, this kid's teaching me so much. <laughs> so what are, what are your kids teaching you? Mm, so much, but I remember thinking my oldest taught me how to live. Meaning when I had him, I was like, Oh dang, I need to show up. So I've, I've had to learn how to live multiple times in my life and this will all be in a book one day. Mm. Um, my middle one taught me how to laugh. He, he doesn't have like a serious bone in his body. And even when I try to pretend or try to discipline him, um, oh my gosh, it's just comical. Like I can't keep a straight face and I, I think he's going to be a comedian. Like he's just hilarious. So good. And then my last one, my last one, my youngest, he taught me how to trust myself. Mm. His whole, you know, he's so patient. He's so kind his whole birth was like, you know, you got this, just keep going. Um, and just who he is, he's this soft, gentle soul that's just content. Um, and he's, he's really all about trust. I love that. I love that. What do you find is right now your biggest challenge with motherhood? (laughs) I don't know. I'm like, which one? Um, challenge wise is, I would say it's probably me Mm. like always having to reassess the stories that come up in my mind of who my children need to be. Right. Right. Um, and their ever growing pace and developmental stages. So I see parenting as a relationship. So just like a marriage or any other relationship you have with someone, it's ever growing Mm. um, and evolving. And the second you think, Oh, I got this, then you enter a new season in your life. Mm. So I think that's what it is, is that it's constantly evolving. Um, but for some reason, and I don't know if I just had a mindset shift, I've come to really enjoy challenges in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm like, Oh, I just, I constantly need to be challenged. My husband thinks it's crazy. Cause like next on my bucket list is like to, um, mountain climb. I don't know why. Amazing. So I don't know why I've never done it in my entire life. I never used to be this person. So I love it when, you know, I'm, I'm like, why am I yelling so much? Or, Oh, my son's really struggling with this. I'm like, yes, let's take it like head on. But I think it's just the evolution that it's a relationship and you're constantly going to be challenged. I love that. I I love that. Your, your, your relationship to challenge and your relationship to fear is so beautiful. And I think that's, that's such a huge piece of advice to just uh, for those of you listening, like check in, what is your relationship to challenge and what is your relationship to fear? And if we can just work to reestablish those two very important things that come up, like they're going to come up all the time, right? Like fear comes up in my life constantly every day. Mm -hmm. Challenge does as well. And if I'm trying to constantly dodge fear and dodge challenge, I'm not living. And I think automatically without having the awareness, like this is the human condition of like trying to avoid pain. Yeah. I always tell people get comfortable with your discomfort. And I know that's kind of a common saying, mm. um, but the more uncomfortable you can get, the better. And it's really interesting because I always want to dissect this relationship with suffering. Versus, oh yeah, let's go. Let's go there. Let's do it. Yeah. Suffering versus discomfort. And I feel like I'm not an expert on it. Um, I don't know. Maybe we can talk about it a little bit because I'm like, suffering is like this 
this thing you live with chronically, like sometimes you feel a little comfortable with it. You're like, Oh, I know this suffering. I've been there. It's like self punishment or something. And then discomfort, it comes from this place of growth and you're just like, Oh, that's really uncomfortable. But I don't know, like, I can't even put it into words, the difference, but I'm like, Mm -hmm. if we're willing to live in this state of chronic suffering or chronic pain, and then not choose to do whatever we need to do. Example, the first thing that comes to my mind is money, obviously. Um, well, not obviously, you, you wouldn't know that, but <laughs> so if money comes to my mind. I'm thinking, okay, I have a thousand dollars in my savings account and I have a thousand dollars on a maxed out credit card. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Oh my God. My credit, my credit, my credit, my credit. I, I have no more room on my credit card. And all I have to do is take it out of the savings account and put it on the visa. Yeah. Like, and obviously this is just a made up example, mm-hmm. but seeing how we have choice in that. And we just, we just decide to stay, to stay in a place of suffrage mm-hmm. and, but discomfort is, oh, well then then I'm not going to have any savings left. Right. Great. Sit with that uncomfortable yeah. feeling yeah. and then figure out how you can save more money. Oh, I love that. I love that. What so, is your definition between those two? Well, so I, I think for me, viscerally in my body, it, it's like a, it, 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 it's, it's a different frequency in my body. The difference between like, I I say like pain and suffering of like, I know what pain feels like. And I also know what suffering feels like. And when I'm in suffering, um, the involvement of my stories in my mind is way more activated than when I'm in a state of pain. I like I I can be in a state of pain and it, and I've and I've found like a felt sense of like safety in the experience of pain mm-hmm. because like I've I've accessed how to feel the pain while also feeling into my heart and feeling the safety and when I like resource the the frequency of safety in my heart while experiencing the pain it balances out and then I have perspective on it. But when I'm in suffering, I have no access to safety and my mind is going a million miles a minute. Yeah. Right. And so it's, it's so easy for me to discern the difference. And it's just a question I ask myself, am I in pain or suffering right now? Cause it's like, you know, pain has been such an important piece of my, you know, development and my growth and like who I am and, you know, changing the relationship to pain has allowed me to, to do, you know, so many other things that have brought me so much joy in my life. Like pain for me in so many ways is like the access to my joy. Yeah. Like, like, um, but like, I don't know, like eight months ago, eight months ago, I was experiencing like so much pain around like relationships. And it was like through the pain that I felt into what is now joy of, you know, attracting this, like a new man into my life. Mm. And, and, but had I stayed in suffering, I would, I would, I would, I would, create meaning and stories around that sensation, which would drive me into suffering. And then that would expand and I wouldn't see the perspective. But when we can like feel the pain and, and know that it's like through it is where we experience the lightness, like that's powerful. But it's, it's, it goes back to that thing of like, uh, this is a new thing for me. And I say new within the last like, you know, a couple of years, my whole life, I was like, it's so good at suffering. So good at suffering. Mm. Yeah. And I find pain is, um, temporary as they say, mm-hmm. but it's, so it's not familiar to us. Right. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's why we're afraid of it. Cause we're like, Oh, what's this? Oh, right. it's, here. it's scary. Therefore I should push it away mm-hmm. because Oh, mm-hmm. suffering that's familiar. Right. That's familiar. So yeah. it, I, I think it's so unique and individual to every single person, but the mm-hmm. more I am like, Oh man, this underlying discomfort I have going on here, that's, it's turning into like a suffrage and I don't like it. So, mm-hmm. um, I have to ask myself, what, what am I willing to do to create shifts? And sometimes that's, I have to bring on more team members in my business. And then I watch myself being extremely uncomfortable, learning to trust and let go. Um, but I know that's only temporary and I know I'm going to grow through the process or it's, you know, letting my son go to camp and me going, Oh my God, I feel like he's leaving me forever. I'm like, Heather right. is going to camp. Eventually he's going to leave you forever. So what right. do you do then? So, right. Right. Absolutely. It's really just sitting with that discomfort and not avoiding it 
mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. keep yourself safe. So I, uh, I used the word a couple of weeks ago, I was, I was coaching one of my groups and I used the word marinate. Like, can we marinate into the pain and like, just, just feel fully into it without changing it, shifting it, distracting ourselves or doing anything. Mm-hmm. And I was like coaching this through and, and I was chatting to, to one of the women in the society in, in my uh, group program. And then after she came back the next week and she gave me this amazing analogy. So she went and she, she tried it and she's like, oh my God, I totally get it. She's like, think about when you take meat and you marinate it, what happens to it? It softens. Mm. And that's like, that it is exactly what happens when we allow ourselves to marinate into the sensation of pain, we soften. And I was like, isn't that cool? And you're so much juicier and spicier. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Because you have like a, a greater range of emotionality that we can, we can move through. Your youngest is four, you said? Yeah, he's five. Yeah, but he's yeah. five. So like his range of emotionality is probably like quite high and low, right? Like he can get like super high and really, and like that is aliveness. Like we talked about like fear being alive and like sadness can also make us feel alive. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where we gather like so much energy to live a amazing life rather than living this like numbed out life of like never really getting too happy and never really getting too sad. When we can fully go to the depths of like that sadness and that anger and that fear and that doubt and whatever, whatever is there, it allows us to elevate into those higher states of of consciousness. Yes. So good. It's like an Oreo cookie. (laughs) Oh my God. I love that. Man, I love Oreos. They're so good. (laughs) (laughs) I want one. (laughs) Do you like eat the Oreo like just fully or do you like the icing out? I don't eat Oreos. Oh, dang. No. Hey, I'm actually curious. I know you said this is for another conversation, but I'm just going to like go on like a huge tangent right now and talk about like, um, you don't drink much coffee. I'll have a coffee a day and that's only been recent that I've been able to drink that before I had to stop because it gave Mm. me so much anxiety because my nutrition was not good. Mm. That's so interesting. I just did like 30 days of no coffee and I felt amazing and um, I started having it again and I'm like, I don't think this shit's for me. Even though like my mind likes it, it's like my body's not a fan. I haven't had a drink this year in 2018. Like mm-hmm. not a glass of wine, not nothing. Really? Uh, previously, I would drink maybe five times a year. Like I was never a big drinker, but it just doesn't agree with me. Like the sugars just throw my body off. And I am, there's been many times, first it was like the social anxiety of what am I going to tell people? Um, and now I'm just like, yeah, I do it for health reasons and energy reasons. And I get so many people that are like, I wish I could do that. Right. I right. wish, I wish, I wish. Mm-hmm. Like, don't be afraid. Lean in. It's not going to kill you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I totally Make agree. You look at your shit. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Alcohol gives me like mad anxiety the next day. I just feel yeah. like I, I feel like a bag of balls the next day. I'm like, oh god, this is horrible. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. all us sensitive souls, right? Yeah. Like everyone who is in any form of healthcare or healing or coaching, um, we all have this little twinkle in our eye where we see each other like, I know you. Mm. We're the we're the empaths, we're the children of you know, the women that I work with now. They're like, I don't understand my child. And I'm like, that's because you're raising this empathetic, sensitive soul who is here to make a difference in the world, but they don't understand how to manage their energy. Mm. And we're taught the complete opposite. And then we're like, why am I a weirdo? And Mm. we're not weirdos. We just need to find each other and say, oh, we're like a different breed of humans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Oh, that's so good. So you're amazing. I I could literally, I feel like I'm just like talking to an old friend. (laughs) I could talk to you all day. I see you. You're twinkling your eye. (laughs) (laughs) It's so good. I know this this podcast has been, you know, so so beneficial not only for the moms in our audience but for for our our entire audience. I I know we're going to going to get incredible reviews and feedback on this one. So thank you for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and your way of being and in this new way and I think Man, I, I just fully support who you are. I admire it. I, I am excited to do motherhood like you are doing it. And I just, I'm so grateful that I have you in my life now as an incredible role model. So thanks, Heather. I appreciate you. Thank you. It's 
you know, it, like even you saying that I'm like, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. There's people listening, <laughs> mm-hmm. even yeah. though I know there's people listening, you know, I, people will say that, but the confirmation of this is the bigger lesson here of be yourself mm-hmm. because other people are waiting for you to be yourself. And mm-hmm. then you're giving them permission to go, yes, I'm not alone. So yeah. Thank oh, you. I love it. I love it. So where can we find you? How can we get amongst your goodness? Yeah. So you can just find me on my website, heatherchauvin.com. Last name spelled C-H-A-U-V-I-N.com. Um, or my podcast is called Mom Is In Control. And that's on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever, Spotify. Um, yeah. I love it. And I'm hanging it. out more on Instagram these days. Are you? Are you? Yeah. I love Instagram. I'm just, yeah. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Instagram. <laughs> It's, I, I like actually don't enjoy social media at all, but mm-hmm. if I had to stick with one, it would be Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot more personal. Yeah. Well, my love, thank you so much for being on the show for everyone listening. We'll put all of Heather's links in the show notes. So it's super easy for you to find her and, and uh, her content's amazing. Go check out her podcast and Heather, thank you so much for being here and, and sharing all this goodness with our community. Thank you, Samantha. This has been this has been so much fun. I'm tired. I need to <laughs> just don't have coffee. <laughs> no coffee. All righty. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for everyone listening, and we will catch you next week for another episode. Bye for now. Are you ready to take back control of your time and energy? But the thought of where to start feels overwhelming. I created something for you. It's called the Energy Finder Quiz. Yep. This quiz takes less than two minutes and it helps you identify where to focus so you can conquer your dreams without feeling like you're failing as a mother. After coaching hundreds of women, helping them reverse engineer how they want to feel in their personal and professional lives, I started to notice four hidden skills that women must master in order to create the work-life balance that they crave. So head on over to Heather Chauvin, C-H-A-U-V-I-N dot com forward slash life quiz. Heather Chauvin dot com forward slash life, L-I-F-E quiz, Q-U-I-Z and get started. I even give you specific podcast episodes to listen to based on your energy finder quiz results. The goal is to show you where to focus so you can regain your time and energy and become the woman you deeply know you are capable of becoming. HeatherChauvin.com forward slash life quiz.